Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Katarina. I film videos about cruelty-free and vegan beauty, project panning, and I'm just trying to enjoy my own makeup collection. So if you're interested in any of those things, I would really love it if you subscribed. Last week I filmed a video where I shared with you all of the higher end and indie eyeshadow palettes that I have decluttered. I was supposed to just film one video where I share every single palette I have decluttered. However, I have decluttered 30 eyeshadow palettes, so the video would have been way too long, so I had to split it. And today is going to be the part two, and we are going to talk about all of the drugstore eyeshadow palettes that I have decluttered. This video is inspired by Chick Geek. She's really amazing, so I will of course link her channel down below. She filmed a video in April where she shared all of the eyeshadow palettes she has decluttered, so I knew it's something I want to do too. And yeah, today we are going to talk about pretty many palettes. I I think I have learned my lesson what comes to buying, you know, a lot of eyeshadows and then decluttering them after that. Well, at the moment I am on an eyeshadow no-buy, so I don't buy anything anyways. Even when my eyeshadow no-buy ends, nowadays I know better what I like and what I don't like, so I don't go and purchase something that I really wouldn't like. Let's actually start with a couple of brands whose eyeshadows I would really love to like, but unfortunately I just don't enjoy these formulas. Especially this first brand is something that I would really want to love their eyeshadows, because overall they are one of my favorite brands, but their formula just is not the right for me. And I'm unfortunately talking about e.l.f. I love e.l.f. They are amazing, really affordable, cruelty-free and vegan drugstore brand. They make great products, like I have loved their foundation in the past, I have loved their primers and so many other things. I do have at the moment their cream contour kit and their cream blush palette and they are really amazing quality. However, I have never really loved their eyeshadows. I really wanted to like them. All of the palettes I have ever had from them, I have decluttered, but I will say these are all little bit older palettes. I haven't tried anything newer from them. I know those are they bite size eyeshadows. Those gouaches, they seem to be really popular and some people even compare those to Natasha Denona. Also those Little bit bigger palettes, I don't know if they have 18 pans or what, like the Opposites Attract palette and the Earth and Ocean Toast palettes seem to be really good and many people love those. So the first palette from e.l.f. we are going to talk about is actually the only duo that I'm going to mention. I think this is the only duo I have ever had and because it's not a single I wanted to include it, even though I don't know if you really can count it as a palette. But it was the Elf Best Friend eyeshadow duo in Beach Squad. I just don't like duos. I could really never create a look using only two eyeshadows. Maybe I could if the eyeshadows really went together. If I had like a crease color and then a lid color, then I could use a highlight that I'm using on my face to highlight my brow bone and the inner corner. However, if I only put a peachy matte like that to my crease, I would for sure want to put something lighter and shimmery to my lid, not something that is actually deeper than the crease color. And I don't think this was that great quality. The shimmer was really lackluster. The matte was alright, but I didn't like the shimmer and I don't like duos, so I decided to declutter it. Then I have decluttered my e.l.f. matte for matte palette. This one was my favorite palette from all of the e.l.f. palettes I have ever tried and I got pretty good use out of this. However, I used up my basic shades if I remember correctly. I think I used my favorite crease shade or transition shade and then the brow bone highlight shade. So without those I didn't really want to keep this anymore. I think it was okay. I don't think it was bad and this was a really sleek packaging so it was something easy to take with me when I was traveling. I used to travel way more. Nowadays I just like to be at home not just during the pandemic but 
in general I like to be at home I don't like to go to places that much but I used to go a lot more to parties and festivals and stuff like that so I traveled way more and this was something I always took with me because I liked the color selection I think the formula in this palette was okay. It wasn't the worst I have ever used. No way, we are going to talk about those later. But my biggest issue with e.l.f. matte formula is that the shades just kind of like mud up together. It doesn't suck, I don't say that. And for $10 I don't think this is a bad price. But I think in Europe this is sold for a way higher price and I wouldn't really be ready to pay more than that for this. And you know, I'm not somebody who is like super picky about their eyeshadows, I don't think, and there definitely are affordable formulas that I do like, like Colourpop and BH. But I'm also not someone who wants to have eyeshadows that is good just for the price. And I think that is the case with this palette. It's good for the price, but is it really that good if I start to compare it to some of my higher end matte eyeshadows? No, it's not. Then probably the worst eyeshadow palette from e.l.f. that I have tried is their nude rose gold eyeshadow palette. I really don't know why I got this in the first place because I knew very well when I bought this that I don't like these tones. I talked about this one in my last video where I talked about my higher end palettes that I have decluttered. I have decluttered my Too Faced Buddha eyeshadow palette and that palette really made me realize that I don't enjoy these kind of like ashy, rosy, dusty tones on myself. I just think they clash with my skin tone. So I knew when I bought this palette that it's not necessarily my favorite color story. So I don't know why I got it in the first place. However, I don't think that the formula of this one was that nice. I actually don't remember if the mattes were similar than the mattes in the Matte for Matte palette. However, the shimmers in this palette were really bad. They were really lackluster. Some of them were really flaky. Some of them were just kind of like, almost like mattes with glitters. Then the latest e.l.f. palette that I have decluttered is their Prism Eyeshadow palette in Naked. This one was my baby panda palette and when I first got this in 2016, I believe, I kind of liked it. It has always been something that I kind of liked, but this was something that when I started to pan it, I really started to dislike it. I started to notice that I do have formulas in my collection that I prefer over this one. Also, the packaging broke, so I decided to stop panning it and declutter it. So those were all of the e.l.f. palettes that I have ever decluttered. Would I purchase e.l.f. eyeshadows in future? I honestly don't know. I would be interested in trying one of their bite-sized eyeshadow guads because people really seem to love those. However, we are going to talk about guads later. Guads are really not my thing, so I really don't know if I should try any of those like after my eyeshadow no buy is over. And then whenever my eyeshadow no buy ends, I am thinking of doing something like allowing myself to purchase one palette in every four months or something like that. And if I really allow myself to purchase three eyeshadow palettes one year, I don't think I would necessarily go for e.l.f. palette. But then, let's talk about another brand that I would really love to love their eyeshadows because they have so much beautiful palettes, but I really dislike their formula. So I am talking about Revolution. I have tried two palettes from them, I didn't like either of them, and I think overall Revolution is a brand that their eyeshadow formula shares opinions. I'm one of those people who doesn't like it. I find that their mattes, while they may have pigment, at least in one of the palettes I have tried, they really take time to blend the eyeshadow out and I do have formulas that are just easier to work with. I don't like it when I need to be blending, blending, blending for so long when I can create my look with something that is easier and quicker to use. And then the shimmers from Revolution, well, in the two palettes that I have tried, they were really different, but they weren't good in either of them. So yeah, I just unfortunately don't like their eyeshadows. But the first Revolution palette I have had and decluttered was the Salvation palette in the shade Welcome to the Pleasure Dome. 
I really wanted to like this because the color story of this is really nice. It's mainly like cooler toned neutrals with some pops of color, like with some greens and blues. These shimmers were for sure on the more sheer side, so if you wanted like a popping shimmer, you would need to wet your brush and use a finger and do all of those tricks to make these work. Especially the more colorful shades were disappointing to me when I got this palette. I already had a lot of neutral eyeshadows, so I was mainly interested in getting this palette because of the colorful shades, but they were nothing like they look in the past. I remember when I tried this, some people had been raving about Revolution eyeshadows, and I was like, wow, what is all of the hype about? If you love Revolution eyeshadows, I'm happy for you because they do have so much pretty palettes. But for me it felt like I need to spend so much time on like blending my eyeshadows. Another palette from them that I have decluttered is their Iconic Division palette from their Reloaded series. Okay, this one is duping the Subculture palette. The funny thing about this one is that I have never really been into the color story of Subculture. I know it's many people's favorite color story and I hear so often people say that the formula is not necessarily their favorite because they need to be so careful, but the color story is why they love the palette. And I think it's kind of like a cool color story, it's really crunchy, but realistically it is not something that I would reach for. So I really don't know why I went and purchased a dupe for subculture. And I didn't like this formula. I think the mattes in these are really pigmented, but again, they take a lot of effort to blend out. The shimmers in this palette were really, really pat. The bronze and the green were really flaky, and then the duo chrome. <laughs> I said it in one of my videos when I still had this palette a year ago that the duo chrome is my least favorite shade in my entire collection because there's like no base color whatsoever in the pan. It looks white, but when you swatch it, it's just like no color, but then there is like pink shit. I really hate to say these things about these eyeshadows and about these brands. I would really love to stay positive like here on my channel, but at the same time I do want to be honest. And in my opinion, these just are not that great quality. And if you are looking for amazing, affordable eyeshadows, I would very really rather recommend Colourpop or BH Cosmetics than Revolution or ELF. Okay, I will really need to speed this up because otherwise we are going to be here forever and I'm filming pretty late today so I don't want to run out of light. So next couple of palettes from Berry M. First their Fall in Love eyeshadow palette. I actually did really like this palette. I did like the quality. Are they the most pigmented ever? Not necessarily, but they are really buildable and blendable, so they are easy to work with in my opinion. However, I just didn't really feel a need to keep this palette because everything that is going on I had somewhere else in my collection. Then I had from Barry M. their Smoking Hot eyeshadow palette and it came with one blush. This one is an older palette from Barry M. and this one was not that good in my opinion. First of all, I really don't get why there is like an orangey coral blush in a cooler toned palette. I mean, of course, you can wear warmer toned blush with cooler toned look, and I actually think it looks pretty cool, but usually when I create a look using these cool tones, I want a cooler toned blush or then something really neutral. But unfortunately, the quality in this palette was not good at all. The shimmers were so bad, like they took a lot of building up or a lot of setting spray, and I just don't think it was that great. This one I didn't even buy myself, it was a gift with purchase. Then let's move on, BH Cosmetics. I have only ever decluttered two eyeshadow palettes from them, I really do love their formula. I have only decluttered a couple of their smaller six pan palettes. One of those palettes I panned last year, it was my baby panted palette, and then I deposited one, but the two that I have decluttered are their 6th edition second tray to go and dual effect universal to go. Actually these colors look pretty nice together. 
but the idea of these six pan palettes from BH Cosmetics is that they do have six random eyeshadows from one larger eyeshadow palette so you can kind of like test the formula. However, in my opinion, these are pretty expensive for what they are. They are five dollars each, I believe. I only paid one dollar for each. I bought them when they were on sale, but BH Cosmetics eyeshadow palettes are anyways quite affordable, so I wouldn't recommend anyone to spend five dollars on something like this. I personally would rather recommend you to pick a full-size palette from them, the one that is most speaking to you, because the quality is really nice. Okay, next is the only eyeshadow palette from Wet n Wild that I have owned. I had their original Comfort Zone eyeshadow palette, not the new one, the OG with eight eyeshadows, all shimmery. I think this was okay. I really did like the peachy shimmery eyeshadow. It was one of my favorite lid shades, at least from more affordable brands. I do really like that kind of peachy lid shade. And then I really did like the duo chromey shade in the cooler side. But then some of these eyeshadows, in my opinion, were Dutch, like the green. I have heard people say that it is an ice cream. In my opinion, it was kind of like sheer and not that good. I think it was okay, but anyways, Wet n Wild is no longer cruelty free, so I am not too sad that I decluttered this. Okay, let's talk about the worst eyeshadow palette I have ever tried. I would love to love this palette because first of all I like the colors and I really do like the brand. This comes from the brand Gosh. They are Danish brand. They are cruelty free. Nowadays I think all they make is vegan and also I saw that they have a new mascara or a couple of new mascaras where they have used plastic waste from the ocean. I think that's really cool. But this palette honestly was the worst eyeshadow palette. That I have ever tried. It was their nine shade eyeshadow palette in the shade or in the color to enjoy in New York. This is really pretty color story. It's kind of like sunsetty. There's like that really beautiful peach, then there's some neutrals, then there's some plums. And I bought this because I liked the colors. However, the mattes, when you put them to your eyes, they blend out to nothing. Like I would put the transition set to my crease area and it would just like disappear when I blend it. I don't know, I have never experienced that with any other formula. And yeah, that was with all of the mattes. Then the shimmers, they were just really flaky. Then the second worst eyeshadow palette I have ever had is the Pixie Mesmerizing Mineral Eyeshadow Palette and I had it in the side Plum Guarth. These eyeshadows were just really sheer and they would mud up together like the elf eyeshadows I was talking about previously. Now that I'm looking pictures of this eyeshadow from Google, some people have been able to swatch it nicely. I don't know how they did that, honestly, because mine was so sheer. And by the way, Pixie is really expensive here in Europe. Now that I'm looking some of these palette prices, one of these mesmerizing mineral palettes is sold at 21 euros and 90 cents. I mean, that's pretty expensive for six poor quality eyeshadows. Then those larger palettes with 12 shades are sold at between 35 and 40. Next is an eyeshadow palette I decluttered quite late last year. It is from the brand Weaker Icon. They are exclusively sold here in Finland in store called Sokos. I had their I Love Tigers palette and I decluttered that one. I just think it was kind of like a boring palette. And for me to say that a palette is boring, it kind of like needs to be really boring because I'm a neutral eyeshadow lover, but I think this color story was just a little bit confusing and I really didn't like all of the colors. Couple of the colors I loved, that's why I kept it so long. It had a couple of eyeshadows in beautiful satin formula. However, I realized that it's not worth it for me to keep it if I only keep it for a couple of shades. Okay, let's let's talk about the largest eyeshadow palette I have ever had and also that I have decluttered. I know that people are nowadays into smaller eyeshadow palettes, 
but I don't mind a little bit larger palette. The biggest palette I have is 28 eyeshadows, but I can imagine that I could enjoy one of those Morphe 35 palettes. Not that I'm interested in trying Morphe, it's honestly the last brand on this earth that I want to try anything from. However, what I mean is that a palette in that size I think would be something that I would enjoy because I would have a lot of options, but if the color story is cohesive in that palette, like in the Jaclyn Hill palette for example, I don't see why not. I think the palette looks pretty and it's not like enormous. However, the largest eyeshadow palette I have had had 88 eyeshadows in it, and for me, that was a little bit too much. It was from Brand Blush Professional. To be honest, I don't even know if they are cruelty free. They are probably one of those kind of like private label brands that come from China, I would assume, by the style of these palettes. It was their 88 color eyeshadow palette in Hot Earth, and I actually kind of liked this palette. I liked the colors. It was a really nice mix of different colors. There was neutrals, there was some oranges, some reds, plums, even a couple of blues, some greens, more cooler toned greens and warmer greens. This was so big that I was really overwhelmed. Every time I would open this palette, I would have no idea what to do and what shadows to use because there's like five options what you can put to your brow bone. There's probably like 50 options what you can put to your crease. So it would just be way too much and way too overwhelming for me to create a look using something like this. However, then let's go to the other extreme. So to really small eyeshadow palettes. Well, as I said earlier, I had one duo. I don't like really the concept of duos because I could never create my look using just a duo. When I was doing this list of mine of all of the palettes I have decluttered, I noticed and realized that I have decluttered every single quad that I have ever had. And this was kind of surprising to me, but that is the reality. I will say I kind of do like the idea of quad where you can really create a look from. For example, I think Charlotte Tilbury has that kind of quad. Not that I'm ever going to pay that much for a quad. But in order for me to love a quad, I think it would need to be something that I can create my complete look out of it. So that if I need to travel, I can only take the quad with me and I need nothing else. I don't travel that much, so I don't think quads are something that makes sense for me. But for example, if I was in a job where I would travel a lot, I think that could be a really nice item to own. But I do my makeup all the times at home, so I don't mind pulling a palette or even a couple of palettes to create my look. But let's quickly go through all of these quads that I have decluttered. A couple of them are from Colourpop. I really do enjoy Colourpop formula. There was nothing wrong in the formula of these two, but I just don't like quads and I really didn't like these colors either. So probably I should not have bought them in the first place. The first of these is the Blow Me Away quad. It was from their Nectar collection that was launched I don't remember even if it was in 2017, probably 2017. And then I had their Weekend Warrior Quad. This one I decluttered just last year. I don't know why I kept it for so long. This is probably the most stupid palette purchase I have ever made. I have talked about this one previously. I only bought this palette because of the name of it. Knowing that I would not like the eyeshadows, that I don't like the colors in this one. It's really cool toned. Then I have had one quad from Essence. It was from their Girls Just Wanna Have Fun collection. They do have all the time these limited edition collections. And this was one of those. I actually did quite like this formula. I think Essence eyeshadows can be a little bit hit and miss. I haven't had a lot of eyeshadows from them. I do have still one single from them that I do really like, but then some of the eyeshadows or some of the singles I have tried from them have been just like really flaky and glittery and not good. But I think these were like beautiful satins. But I just don't like quads, so I decluttered this, especially since this is not something where you can create your look from. Then I still have a couple of quads from Isadora. I think these were okay quality, not the best, but not the worst. 
One of the quads I had from them was their Seven Sunset quad. I actually liked the colors. There was a couple of peaches and a couple of neutral browns. All of these are shimmery. I would need my mats from somewhere else. And then I had from Isadora their Tropical Garden quad. And I actually kind of liked this. It had a couple of cooler toned browns and then a green and a blue. But I don't like quads. I just think all of these quads, they felt like I have so much clutter. I don't want to have quads, duos, trios. I don't want to have singles in compacts. If I buy singles, I want them to be magnetic so I can put them to my C palette. Okay, so that was everything for today. Quite a few drugstore palettes I have decluttered, unfortunately. But I think I have learned my lesson and I will stay away from quads and unfortunately from elf palettes and from revolution palettes let me know if you like elf or revolution eyeshadows i feel those are brands that many people really like them but then there are some people like me that just don't really get them to work for themselves anyways that was everything for today thank you so much for watching this video and see you in my next one bye bye